Welcome back to Andy Odevault. Today I'll be talking on a subject pertaining to impedance adapter. Let's find out what this thing really is. So exactly what are impedance adapter? I have with me here an impedance adapter from Venture Electronic and I have in fact three of them in three different uh, configuration the lowest one being 25 ohm and then 50 ohm and 75 ohm All right before i proceed any further right let's just understand the basic principle of impedance adapter it is uh, basically to add resistance to the signal part and when I say signal part it adds resistance to both channel left and right and traditionally impedance adapter has been made by long time ago DIY enthusiasts using this sort of resistors typically and I in fact still use this type of resistor for example like my own ghetto impedance adapter here right so you see here the barrel inside here on the left and right channel i will have this uh, one resistor each which will actually add resistance to the signal part and i will explain later what does it do okay but we are lucky nowadays that we have stuff like this and this is just one example coming from Venture Electronic neatly made and then uh, obviously they use SMD type of resistor inside on each channel with one dedicated ground and I will show you precisely right how do they transfer into performance for sound or should I say how do they, do they influence the sound before I go any further, let's just understand even a bit more on the concept of impedance and resistance. Okay, here I have with me Venture Electronic VE Azure, which is rated at 16 ohm. But let's find out first exactly what is the rating for this IEM. So it's basically 17.6 on the left channel and 17.3 on the right channel so there's a slight of variance there but that's that's pretty much normal and this is a single dynamic driver okay so as you can see here right it is rated at 17 something so let's try just uh, putting up uh, this uh, start with 25 ohm first there okay and now let's find out What's the resistance? This is the ground, common ground, and all right. It now shows almost precisely at thirty nine ohm. Give and take, okay. With the addition of twenty five ohm, then we'll go for fifty ohm. Again, same thing, and it's even higher now at 63. Then we try the next one at 75. Almost 100. In fact, it's actually uh, 91.6. That's quite high, actually. Right? So let's just talk now why would anybody would want to use this impedance adapter you see here right there's two reason or should i say five reason reason number one right you have something like this uh deck m for example here megatron and ovidius b1 dongle here what is known for these two DAC-M is that they are highly powered. 
meaning that you know the output level that they emit are quite powerful for example megatron itself is rated at 4.7 vrms and at over 600 milliwatt of wattage and here we have ovidius b1 amazing sounding dongle one of my favorite still have at around 2 vrms only but it pumps up at around 420 milliwatt of power on both channel you see the issue with this two deck m is that when anybody connects right it to the phone in jack in like this right this thing is so powerful right even if connected to a pc or android host the volume will be tuned down to practically at 2 100 meaning that the volume is just 2 out of 100 and most of the time right especially for anything so sensitive like this at under 20 ohm right the listener can will audibly hear floor noises which to some is a huge deterrent and outright annoying right the same can be said of Ovidius B1 right the noises are just too audible and sometimes it gets in the way especially listening to you know ballad music or jazz or stuff like that right which has a lot of black background and the sort of noise we are getting from this deck amp can be deterrent to the enjoyment of audio so that's why we came into the picture now right why impedance adapter are needed for example let's just start with uh, 25 ohm all right when adding up 25 ohm right that is pretty much probably the most uh, minimal level of uh, suppression for uh, signal on each channel right 25 ohm is considered low for an impedance adapter what it does is that right at the very minimal right the user should then try to see if the floor noises still exist right it may be not powerful enough to suppress noises especially if the IEM is even lower than 16 ohm right for example he this MD4 which runs on 8 ohm right and it's also a hybrid or should I say multiple drivers IEM which is even more prone to floor noises right if the sub noise suppression is gone then it means that 25 ohm is enough sufficient should just stick with 25 ohm however right if the suppression is not enough and still hearing a bit of audible noise in the background right or even static like that move ahead and try 50 ohm and then observe whether the noise suppression or should i say whether the noise suppression works most of the time right from my own experience 50 ohm is enough adequate right but however depending also on the sensitivity of the listener right we may need to go all the way higher to 75 ohm here right now why don't i just jump straight away to 75 ohm right instead of going to 25 this is the tricky part of it right with 25 ohm minimal amount of resistance added right this one does not change sound signature yes impedance adapter can change sound signature as well or should i say the temperament of the sound right where else changing to 50 ohm on highly adaptive or highly sensitive listening device especially iem right on a dynamic driver typically we would hear that the start sound would be tuned slightly different for example i am hearing right even at 50 ohm some dampening of upper frequency meaning that if the iem is already bright right sounding and it is a single dynamic driver potentially the upper frequency would appear slightly 
less bright or not as bright as before or should I say the energy and the sparkle itself may seem subdued now the effect of that right can be pleasing can also be a detriment to the overall quality of what's the intended sound for that particular IEM in fact uh, I have heard uh, even receive feedback and me I myself also have tried this cons this uh, theory with uh, headset sound heart mirror which used to be something that uh, an IEM that I use a lot that IEM is very bright and putting something as high as 75 ohm right helps to suppress a lot of that unnatural brightness decays yes sometimes it sounds unnatural that I need to tone it down so there you have it right this impedance adapter, right, the lowest one will less likely to change the sound signature. But the higher it goes, it may change the sound signature. Right? But I also must note that the impact, or should I say the effect that I mentioned earlier, is relative to dynamic driver. I have found out also that on certain type of driver, especially balanced amateur, my own experience with Atimotic, right? The higher the impedance goes, it has a reverse effect as well. For example, instead of getting warmer or should I say suppression of upper frequency, it can get a bit brighter as well. Now, that's really interesting, right? I know it sounds mind-boggling, but I am a long-time user of Atimotic. And I have used Atimotic anyway from 24 ohm to 150 ohm, right? And that's basically what I'm hearing. I'm just sharing what I'm hearing, right? That applies to balanced amateur, alright? Also, another aspect that is need to be taken into consideration, right? If you have a listening device, which is probably like, you know, on uh, you connect it to something like, again, Megatron here, or some other deck amp which are very quite powerful, and even if your headphone or IEM is rated at 32 ohm, right? But when you change the volume, the volume jumps too high, right? Should I say like, you know, from level 9 to level 8, uh, level 9 to level 10, right? It's just simply jumps too much, right? Impedance adapter can also solve that problem. But this need to be tried and tested because not all listening device will respond to this. It depends on the type of the driver, the type of the tuning, and the type of the material itself as well. But I have been able to use that successfully on most of my IEM, especially. Right? So, that's pretty much it. Right? The reason why this impedance adapter are relevant and when you want to use it. Okay? Let's just recap quickly the whole thing. Okay, interesting subject, right? I hope that information has been clear and concise enough, right? Uh, that I am not babbling myself too technical for you to understand why this impedance adapter are needed, right? It is uh, can be quite useful. Again, just to quickly recap, if you have a very powerful source that you are hearing floor noises, or for the simple fact that you want to actually tune the sound right a bit because certain driver will behave differently you know with the temperament of the sound it may not change the entire sound signature but it will actually have an effect on the timber balance itself or should i say in layman's term making it warmer or even brighter depending on the type of the IEM and the material that they, they are made, being made of okay another one is that it helps also to actually to, to tune the level of jumps between volume it does work okay and last but not least definitely you would hear or should I say see a few variant of impedance adapter in the market nowadays but they are basically sim similar in many ways a concept of introducing resistance in the channel part right left and right always left and right regardless whether it's a diy one or you know something like really neatly made like this or something which is commonly widely popular known to many coming from i5 product which is ie match 
that's an impedance adapter as well. Alright, I hope this has been useful to you and uh, I'll see you again in the next video for NB Order Walk. Thank you. Bye.